Okay, we're gonna get started. Hi guys! Welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm still a little sleepy. So, we're gonna get a slow start. Hello! I hope you guys are ready to learn some neat tips and tricks. Don't bully the teacher! God damn it, Yuzu. Worst TA. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a nice Saturday, even if it's picking on me. <laughs> oh, but I promised I would get working on this lesson. So we're going to, this is, we're going to get started here in a second. Welcome on in. I made the presentation. I did not make a plan for how I'm going to actually present this. So we're just going to roll with it. Let me make myself a little. No, my glasses. I just wanted. I just wanted to move myself out of the way. So you can see my pretty PowerPoint. God dang it. Yes, we'll be, we'll be covering him too. All right. <laughs> Hi, my oh shoot! I moved the glasses too up. There's I I have to be careful. Hold on. All right, let me fix these. Hold on. I gotta fix my glasses. There they okay. go. Now they don't really freak out when I blink. Hello. All right, we're gonna get started. So welcome to Art One Hundred and One Drawing People Part One. I'm sure you've seen all these guides. I'm sure you've seen like reference models. And these, of course, everyone knows our favorite little mannequin doll. Th God damn it. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Dustin. Um. Uh, I don't even remember what's next on my presentation. Hold on. All right. So, how do you, how do we start with drawing people, right? Do you remember your shapes? Do you remember back in our one lesson? We talked about using basic shapes. God dang it, Dustin. Um, where we, we use like boxes, squares, rectangles, circles to build forms. And this is where we kind of start here. Kind of using, everyone say hi to Mango. I'm using Mango as an example. Where I would normally just kind of like, the ideas of like where we start. I usually start like with lines, so we'll go over that too. Um, you start like you can start really simple, and just kind of build off of it. So you start connecting the pieces, forming where your center of line's gonna be. Manga. <laughs> I also messaged Demo because I know he was wanted to be a part of this, but I don't know if he's awake or not. Um. And then as you clean it up, you get to start seeing, like, oh, hey, there's a body. That's the person. And you get to clean it up. Oh, down. oh my glasses are all over the place. Hold on. Hold on. I have to. I have to fix myself. These glasses are. Will it help if I make them smaller? They're just going to. My glasses are going to be wonky. Dude, I know Zemo's schedule. Whenever we do Baldur's Gate, he's like four hours of sleep and fine every Saturday. And we're like, bro, he's insane. But I'll be, I'll be downloading this VOD and uploading it too. So in case he missed it, I'll make it available on my YouTube, which is, it does exist, but it's, it's very little, very unpolished. <laughs> um... So no worries there. All right. So moving on, a good way to practice starting with getting the body forms is this is kind of like an art student's like crucial basic is learning how to do gesture drawings. Um, so the point of gesture drawings is not to like spend a whole lot of time on them. It's supposed to keep your hand loose. You're just trying to get the really the most basic shape and line down of the, like, to capture the pose and the movement. Um, and I mean crucial, like, these should be, like, 30 seconds. There are sites online, um, 
that you can actually that help practice like they'll give you a pose and they'll set a timer on the side so that you can like see like you you start with literally you, you'll start with five seconds you'll start then move on to 10 seconds of drawing and then you'll get like 30 seconds and as you like so you start quick so you can just get just get that motion down just get the shapes down and as you get more time that's when you can start seeing yourself build those details but they should initially you don't want to spend too much time when you're doing gesture drawings they should be very quick like it, just to help get your points down and see where the basic outline and shape of the body is going to be do, 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 do. And a good way to also play with this. Yeah, that's literally it. That's user that is exactly right. It's just quick drawings who we then later go back and build off of. But you don't want to get the point is to just not get hung up on the details. Cause that's what I think a lot of people, especially starting out, is they'll spend way too much time on like one section. Dang it, Dustin! Um and then like they'll go to the next part and they get stuck. Because they're so focused on, like, let's say, like, the arm. So this just kind of helps you break it break it down, really just kind of, like, keep the ball moving. And a good practice po guy for this, you know him, you love him. We love our little mannequin friend. Our little posable mannequin. I have one. Um, I've had him for years. This is every beginner's artist's best friend. Um... It just really breaks down the body into, like, simple shapes. So, like, you don't get hung up on, like, how a certain, like, clothing works or, like, certain facial features or just, it's literally, you will get to all of that way later on, but this is about building your foundations. And this, like, he will help you, like, you can adjust him, you can turn him, and you can just see, like, different angles and like learn to get the idea of like general posing, like how the arms will look at certain angles. Hi, Royal. So we love him. So this is like he's he, this guy's also really useful because if you have him in like physical space, you can see how he exists in a three D manner. And I'm gonna tell you, the biggest and hardest thing for anyone is to start initially thinking in three D. It's because we are, we're very used to, like, when we start drawing, we think of just, like, the flat image, right? <laughs> um, so when we're, when we're drawing, it's, it's important to remember how what we draw is in a physical space. Um, this can be really hard. So, like, here's why I set up the example next here. So we have our traditional 2D, right? Which is, there's only two planes of existence, which is up and down, left, and right. This is where you see a lot of, like, really basic cartoons, like, Family Guy. Like, just, there's, like, no shading. It's very simple. <laughs> and then, as you start to process 3D, there's the Z-axis, which is front and back, or back and forth, right? So you can move, like... Instead of just moving, like, your hand side to side and up and down, you can move it away and towards you. And that's how we get our three-dimensional shape here. So you can kind of see where the lines break down, the other side. And that is, like, that is a hard thing to do. But we're going to break it down, right? And we're going to work on piece by piece. So, I hope you guys are ready for my beautiful present, my corny teacher presentation. Let's break it down. So we're going to start moving on talking about the head. Hi, Chuck! Welcome to our class. You're late. I'm going to have to put that in the book. I'm going to have to paint that in my notebook. What do you mean I'm live? I've been getting ticket. That's fine. I, that's in the, that is... You were excused. All right. <laughs> so, fun fact, and this is how I kind of initially think about heads. Egghead, egghead. I see a heads shaped as eggs. Essentially, you have, like, the broader part, and it kind of comes to a more narrower. So, if, like, just a good idea of if you're struggling. Discord, can you chill? Eggs. 
are the kind of your basic fundamental shape. It's like this little oval that's been pulled a little bit down. We like eggs. So usually what I do is I'll start with my, I'll just sketch a circle initially. I'll draw my line down of like my center line of where I want the center of my face to be. I'm kind of where my, where my eyes are going to set. And then I draw this kind of like pointed um, ellipse down here to try to get shape out the jaw, right? As we clean it up, I can start putting my proportions down. So we can start seeing from A to B, egg to face, right? So here comes my tips and tricks of proportions when drawing a face and or the head in general. This is where you're probably going to want to take notes. And I'm going to call you, I'm going to, well, no, I'm not going to call you egg face. I'm going to call you an egg head. Um, however, this is where I'm going to, talk about all of what I use for tips and tricks when I'm drawing a face. So here we go. So this is kind of all take all of this with a grain of salt because every person is different. But anyway, see so break down. <laughs> um, so see break down. Oh, no, no, don't look at my meme. Um, so you start looking at the head, so you got the whole head, and you break it down to sections. So usually around the midpoint, we'll have our eyes. And then, and like, you break it up into quarters. So, like, right above that, we'll have our eyebrows up here, your nose, and your mouth. They're all kind of an equal distance. Where you, like, take the... If you take... Um... Yeah. So... The, so even if you break it down even more, we're all our face is all connected. So like our eyes, the space between our eyes is the same length as an eye. So you're, it's like three eyes long. And also a fun fact, the forehead, if you put your hand up, is four fingers wide. So your four fingers will rest on your forehead. That's how big your forehead is. It's kind of <laughs> forehead. Well, that's the thing, right? So everything is person. And so humans, we judge, we like in instinctively judge people based on how um, symmetrical faces are. So the more symmetrical faces in our subconscious mind, we see that as more attractive. When you see more asymmetrical features, that's when we notice, like, hey, that looks off or, like, distinct or anyway. Like, fun fact, my ears are asymmetrical. They don't line up perfectly. <laughs> um, but we use that, uh, like, for character. When you're doing, like, character design, those, those little details can really give you a specifically unique design character. That's where you get to play with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. I guess you gotta do a five head. But like comfortably, I would say. Like you can smoosh your thumb in there and be five fingers. But like comfortably from your hairline to your eyebrows is four fingers. Everything, I guess, like I said, every person's unique. So take, give some, take some. <sighs> Um, I mean, it's all good. At least you're not like Yoko from Code Lyoko. Not Yoko, Yumi. Yumi. Yumi from Code Lyoko. Anyway, another proportional thing to keep in mind <laughs> is that your ears is the size from your nose to your eyebrow, essentially. So that's how you usually... That's like kind of like the average size of an ear. Obviously, there are smaller ears. Obviously, there are bigger ears. You, but I'm just talking about like this is kind of like your starting point, essentially. Another fun fact, your palm is the same, almost the same size as your cheek. So if you put your palm on your cheek, it'll be roughly the same size. Um, let's see. And then we have the jaw. So, like, when you are drawing, especially, like, a, like a, a 
three quarters like position, the jaw, your jaw connects right below your ear. That's where you can like move your jaw up and down. And that's where you're going to find where your the corners of your mouth also lead to. So your bottom lip is attached to your lower jaw. Your upper lip is attached to your upper jaw, essentially. And whenever, like, if you're doing any animation or anything, remember the upper jaw, when you're talking, will not move. You're moving the, when we're talking, it's the lower jaw that's doing, like, all the moving. <sighs> um, also another proportional fun fact. Yeah! Yeah, 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 our bodies are weirdly all proportional. Like, I'll go over it too when we get to the body section. Like, we're all, like, it's so all connected. Um, your cupid's bow, which is the space between your nose and your upper lip, that little spot right there, is one finger wide. So one little finger in there. But yeah. So this is kind of like how I essentially, like, start with faces or, like, as such. Like, a lot, especially in, like, anime and cartoons, the space between the eyes is really played a lot. Your foot's actually more proportional to your bicep um, and your forearms. So, fun fact. I'm gonna, that's also covered later, Dustin. You're jumping ahead. Um, but yeah, eyes are, eyes and eyebrows are gonna be the biggest thing when it comes to stylization, character, like, design. You, that's where your bread and butter is gonna be when you're wanting to, like, express a unique character. <laughs> I know a lot of things. Mm. All right, now it's meme time. We get a meme break. Because I loved, this is such, like, an artist, like, art school, like, meme. I loved when Spongebob did this. Especially for the animators. They were just like, ah, yes. Yeah, I dude, I wanted to be a teacher. So, obviously, I gotta put in my millennial memes in there. A little sprinkle here and there. But even, like, in the meme, you can see, you can see we're doing our lines. Our lines and basic shapes. <laughs> So remember how I said think in 3D? Wait, did you actually? I love it. Those are some good ears. I love, that was like me as a kid. <laughs> so, I'm gonna let me, oh shoot, I lost my, my tool. All right. So remember in 3D when we're drawing a face, remember, so we have like where the nose will come out, it will cover your eye and the cheek. You're a three-dimensional object. Unless you're drawing like Picasso, I mean. <laughs> that's up to you. I mean you can draw if you want. This is like, if you're interested in drawing, draw it way along. This is a this is a 3D render. This is a 3D model. Um but I wanted to show it because it does a good job of showing, like, where, like, the nose will come out. You get the cheek. The cheek will go behind. You see the jaw connect to the ear over here. Right? You don't have to draw this. This is just, just remember, to think in 3D. This is, like, when you're thinking of an object, think of how, like, your cheeks are rounded. Or, like, how shadows are going to fall. On, on your face, right? You can kind of see how the ears line up with the eyebrow and your nose. And the line of your jaw is connected to your mouth. Yeah, it shows the three... That's exactly what I was talking about, that three-quarters perspective. <laughs> Alright, moving on. So I said we're going to talk about buddy, buddy, buddies rocket everywhere. So... This is probably the biggest thing I think people struggle with because bodies are insanely diverse. Um, but we have some general rules for them, right? So here comes my next panel where I kind of break everything down. Here's where we're <laughs> circles. Circles are going to be your one of your circles and rectangles are going to be your best friends. So fun fact, most of our bodies are six to eight heads tall of your head. It can, I think, like, there can, you can do five head or, like, but that's kind of, like, how if you want to, like, structure it. 
So that's kind of how to keep your head proportional to your body, too. Um, so our we can, like, split up our body into two sections where we have the upper half and we have the lower half. So, like, our legs are the same length as our, tor- like, head to torso. So, like, the upper half, like, these are equal length. Sometimes people say, like, they have a longer torso or they have a shorter torso. That's that's where you kind of see those differences, right? Um, but in a very general sense, we're pretty proportional in terms of our legs to our top. Um, and as we rest, like, so our wrists will generally line up with our groin area. Like, that's where our legs connect. And our wrists, that's where our wrists kind of naturally, like, land. Hi! You can do it if you want to stand up and rest your arms down. You can kind of trace your wrist to that general area. And your your hands will kind of go mid-thigh. And our forearms and, like, arms and feet are, like, kind of, like, really proportional. I think it's, I think it's more closer to your bicep, but I think... The, the general idea was that your foot is almost as long as your forearm. Obviously, not always true. Keep that in mind. And our elbows naturally rest where our rib cage ends. That's generally right above the belly button. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like, you see it in, like, in Sailor Moon too. Like, their legs are really long. Like, in Widowmaker, her legs are really long proportional to her body. <laughs> it's just one of the things, like, you, like when you see it, it, your brains are like, hey, I noticed that because it's different. No! All right, I'll take a little break for the ads. Oh! <sighs> Hi, guys. Welcome on in. To have a nice break. Actually, it's probably a good time for me to grab my water bottle. Hold on. Aw, yeah. thank you, Chuck. I wanted to be an art teacher when I was in high school, but my art teacher who I was really close with, like, he told me, like, it's not, like, he, as, like, he got lucky because he had, he started in, like, the 80s, but arts now is so different. They're the first thing to be cut, so it's not a secure job. So now I get to kind of, like, live out my dream of being an art teacher. Okay. Welcome back. I waited for you guys. So anyway, as I was saying... Our elbows rest kind of uh, at the end of our rib cage over here. This is where our rib cage, generally the elbow kind of will line up there. <laughs> and that's usually right above the belly button. And you can see, like, we have these lines, the lines of the center line, where I can kind of, like, place where the front of the object is. This is really good for me to, like, where I'm drawing clothing or drawing shadows, like how I understand where this leg exists. Oh, no, you're good, Dustin. I, I saw that, and I was like, we're waiting for the ads to be over, because I'm not letting you guys miss class. I got my water bottle and stuff. And so this is, like, remember, like, we have, like, our pelvis bone, like, so that's kind of, like, where our hips come from, right? And that's where our hips join. That's where our legs connect. Um, generally speaking, hips might be like our like hips and shoulders are considered the widest part of our body general rule of thumb hips this like i said this is where the starting point is that hips and um shoulders are going to be the same distance they're going to be connected obviously everyone has very different like some are broad shoulders so their shoulders are bigger their their hips are bigger or smaller that's where we get to that's where you really get to play with character style So, 
<laughs> so like how you see it, like how you hear about like, oh yeah, that person's hourglass shaped or that person is apple shaped or that person is Dorito shaped. Like <laughs> this, that's where you you get your characterizations, right? Now again, I put I put my I put a note in here. Important note about proportions. These are just general ideas. Every person is unique, and they're everyone is a little bit asymmetrical. I don't think there is a perfectly symmetrical person out there, because the human body, when we're making it, it things change, things happen. My ears are. My, I think I'm, even my mom has different. Like her ears don't line up, so I got that from her. Um. So it's just when you get to play around with these rules, that's how you get to do it. And as Picasso once said, you have to learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist, which means you have to know the rules in order to break them. And so in a general sense, like, this is where you see a lot of people, like, this is where we get our basics down, like this real, just real blobby shape where it's just like, ah, but then you build off of it. You can already see, like, with this gesture drawing, like, you can see how this person is existing in space. And everybody's different. Remembering, like, our joints are connected. Remember, just keep it simple. Start very simple with just basic shapes. Do not worry about the details. Those will come later. <laughs> <laughs> right so we can start actually let's um so let's start to go into practice mode so let me pull up <laughs> Meg Lovina. hi ace welcome to class you're late ow all right so let me come in here all right we'll get this going to clip let me adjust it. Oh, it's like huge. Why is this window so huge? All right, let me, I have to make it smaller. All right, that's good. <laughs> good morning, sunshine, you're fine. My, I forgot the fish, hold on. I knew I was forgetting something. I'll, oh man, hold on. Fish, it's almost here, fish is almost ready. Yay, okay, fish is up. Can someone refund Dustin so he can do his fish again? Why are you being dumb? All right, there we go. So let's start with something new. And let's, I'm gonna show you how to also, <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> Dustin. <laughs> So I'm going to find a reference we can use. I'm going to, I have a bunch saved, so give me a hot second to grab one. And I'll show you how to use a reference pose. You got to watch? Hold on, let me scroll down. Ooh, not those. Those are too spicy. Oh, I should have just gone through the profile. There we go. So let me grab this guy. Where, there is it. All right. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I just wanted to copy dot. Okay. So we're gonna start with this. Pretty cool dynamic pose, right? We're gonna come over here. I'm gonna put it to the side. <laughs> Look at y'all getting your fish. All right. So, as we start, I just I'm gonna like quickly like I'm just gonna like circle. His shoulders kind of come down. His shoulders here. He's got his lower shoulder. His neck's kind of there. 
I'm literally just keeping it quick. He's got his hand over here. I can see his body. There's a thigh. You can see his hand is briefly over his, or kind of over his knee, so I know where that lines up. Come on. No, I'm trying to move it. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So it's just about being loose with it. You can kind of see his eyes come down. He's got the knife. I can kind of see his foot come down this way. So this is what just the drawings all is just keeping it loose so I can get the, that general idea down. <laughs> Good. Keep it loosey goosey, baby. Loosey goosey. All right. Then I can like as we build on it. He's got like a jaw, like an actual jaw. Why is the goose loose to keep? You've never seen a goose run around? It's Untitled Goose Game. Like that. Right? So now like this the idea is that I very quickly have just I've got I'm blocking out the shapes essentially. Look at my little goose. Look at my little geese. Look at my little geese running around. They're all loose. My geese are loose. Yes, Ace. Mr. Angel 73. What's a shape? I think we're going to have to send you back a grade. I'm sorry. I think you missed some key fundamentals there. You can't hear the hot shit. Um, shoot. I can't remember where I have the haunt come out. Properties. Let's try this. Hold on. Let me, I'm going to honk at y'all for a little bit. Did you guys hear that? Okay, cool. Honk. I'll do three honks for each of you. Hold on. Honk. 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 There you go, my little geese. See, the idea is the gesture, the gesture drawing is just about how the, we're figuring out how the, this exists in space. I'm gonna actually make him just a smidgen. What the fuck? You're all getting detention. Green makes me think of grass. <laughs> no, -uh. right? <laughs> so yeah, like I can see where, and also like when I think of like think of a like a Barbie doll or Ken doll, where like how the legs and arms kind of like can like connect. Dolls are kind of a good way to see how the joints like line up. Like I can see. Like, if we go in here, I can see this is kind of a more general shape where we got more of the lines over here. The leg is very, like, straight line where we have a good, like, bent, like, angle over here. Same thing. Actually, this is a good, like, pose, too, where you see these straight, smooth lines on one side where on the left you have our angles. 
So a good for a way to like we can see how his weight is shifted in a 3D space where he's holding all the weight is like back here. Dude, I will. Those are like $70 a pop though. It would just <laughs> you're good. Yuzu usually likes to clear it out on me. So like I can see where I'm gonna put eyes. I can shape out my nose. <laughs> and I can see like there's like the the shoulders kind of like the arm is coming in front. So there's gonna be like a bit of tension between my shoulder. Oh, another fun fact that I, um, another tip and trick I do for drawing bodies, especially with posing. Big thing I, this is why you see me do it every time. You see me draw like the shoulder, like the circle. That's like where the joint exists and the, and your wrist. I draw a little circle in your wrist because these joints make a line between them and you make a right angle and that's where the elbow joint. These three joints are connected. It's very much a mechanism of how they're connected. So you like, so you saw how those like that line lit up. Oh. So I have a shoulder. I have the shoulder here. I have the wrist ball right here. I made, I draw their lines, how they're connected, right angle. The elbow is over here. So I can like see, I need to join it over a little bit. Hi, Ray. So that's, I, you see me do that whenever I'm doing art streams and working on, like, that's something I use every single time. That is a big one for me. Obviously, Lucy Goosey have fun with it, but that's how it keeps me like, okay, that's how I can keep it pretty proportional and helps me figure, and it helps me figure out how the arm would, would exist in that space. Liars get taken out back. Welcome. Hey, 64. So. Oh, I'm on the eraser tool. That's why. <laughs> Cat picks are accepted. That is an acceptable pass. Also, a big thing, another tip and trick I learned. When you're drawing a leg... So, like, I've learned when you draw the leg, the thigh has, like, the top, the front of the thigh has a more curved, or the back is more straight, where you draw the, like, the, sh the shin is straight and the your calf is curved. So, it's, like, curve, straight, straight. And you're going to get a proportional, like, kind of, like, fun leg shape there. So thicker lines in art, um, it kind of shows where like the, yeah, it shows where like weight is kind of like more heavy, where things there might be more like, um, like where they're like, whoop, where this, where like this might be a little heavier to indicate that these two, like, this is an object kind of like in front of each other. So I see like some lines get thinner because like and it, like the thicker lines when you do them brings more attention to it. So a lot of a lot of artists um, will do thicker lines around the outside. Hi, Pep. Thank you. Have a good lurk. Um, so the thicker lines a lot of people like to do for the outside, and they'll do thinner lines on the inside of the drawing. But then they'll use kind of use a little bit of weight to play within the um inside of like the positioning like the arm here to show that like this is in front where this one might be a little faded in the back let me clean this up a little bit next question <laughs> wait ray wants to make an inappropriate joke ray are you suggesting something in my in my class so I can start like cleaning it up a little. 
His head feels small to me, so I'm gonna like just make it bigger. And with digital art, I can literally just bop, 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 and just make it bigger. That's too big. There we go. More like that. Of love. Oh my God, Ray. <laughs> I'll see you after class. Um. So now, you know, so let's see. So I can see like over here, I'm going to make this like a bright red. So you can see in here in the drawing. So we have our, this center line kind of going down here and at the belly button, you see it kind of come back around because he's bending. This is where our bending point is in our body. <laughs> right? So the center line keeps me in front of like, so this, this area is more in the back where there's a lot more oh. over here. So this side is showing up a lot more. And I can see coming down here how, hi, thank you for this sub. Oh my God, Chuck, thank you. Quark. Um, so I can see the top of the line of the thigh comes here. And we have the base and you can see where that leg is connecting, right? So he comes out here and the same thing is over here where you have the base and where the, where the leg connects here. So let me get that cleaned up. <laughs> there in my timer it says ads are coming up in about a little under nine minutes and we'll take another small break for the others too. All right. So I can see where the hip. Hi, Bella. Thank you, Bella. I'll be sure to get this on my, on my YouTube as well. All right. So I can see, I can kind of, and as when you're doing gesture, like now I'm kind of like carving out of the shapes I made. I'm kind of like carving it. I'm adding to some stuff so I can see like the shape of it. That's so I can imagine a 3d space, right? We will, if you want to make it pronounced. Okay. Sky, the clothes are coming next. That's what, actually, we're going to do. I'm planning for the next lesson to actually be, um, like the, the additionals of Julie. Like, so part two will be like covering hair, covering clothing and like fabric, um, and how that kind of will exist on the body. So I can see how he's got a little bit and then like the line kind of comes out. So I can see like how that line kind of curves because we have muscle here, our back muscles and our thought and our thighs. We will, we can, I was planning on doing a little mini booba to tutorial today too. We can do that in a little bit. Um, cause I know that was asked by some people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you guys are excited. We'll do that when I finish up this little pose. All right. I can see, and I know a lot of people struggle with hands and feet. I'm thinking I'm going to make a whole lesson plan dedicated just to hands and feet. Cause dear God, that's like the struggle everyone like feels. And I can see like the heel comes out. I can see how those they t <laughs> yeah for sure it is I still fucking struggle with it um I'm planning to buy a pack from a couple of artists of like reference artists. So people, the people who does stuff like this, they're my favorite. I love these people. So these, these guys are the pose archives that are on Twitter. Um, I love their shit cause they do both like male form, female form. They do a lot of dynamic poses. 
Another one I really like is um, Adorka Stock. I have been following her since middle school. She is fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So like I said, we'll cover how hair kind of exists on the head, because that's that's like hair is also very important for like characterization. It's how we, and also just how it's like we as human people, like that's how we express ourselves pretty easily. Like we. You may not think about it, but your hair is really important part of your identity, right? Because for a lot of people, if you just go up like, hey, shave your head, a lot of them are going to be like, no, fuck you. Because it's because it, it is important to us. Um, doobie doobie dooba, doobie doobie dooba. Why? <laughs> chunk, chunk, but like those things like, I've seen you have fun with your hair. Like, you do it as kind of like, you kind of like explore with it, right? Like, and that's the thing is like, I think I've been like, so transparency, I've also, I've been having a lot of like mental health rough to patch, right? And I do think part of it is like, I have not done anything with my hair for a year. Over a year is when I got it cut. I haven't done anything with it. And I've been thinking about, like, maybe I'll feel better if I do a little bit of my hair, kind of, like, refresh it. Kind of, like, I don't know. But, yeah, I'm, uh, that will also be. So, we got several lessons on the way. I'm not getting a mohawk. My head would be too. My head's a weird shape, man. Uh-uh. Yeah. And, like, so for, like, the hand. Let's go in here. And I will. We can go. Let's do a little mini break here. So you can see how that line goes straight. So I can see how it kind of goes. And I can see how there's like, I'm going to go back in here. So in here, you can see the hand kind of like as a box almost. Where like it's going to come out. And then you have your fingers. And you have this little one. <laughs> Dude, victory curls are a pain in the ass. I, I cannot do that. What's up, Yuzu? I'm listening. So I can kind of like almost break down. And I can like... I'm going to clean this out. We need portraits, self-portraits. Yeah, we can definitely go over the grid method. That's like, I learned that in high school and it is helpful. We will, I don't really use it anymore, but it's, I don't think it's a good, it's a good beginner's tool. And I know a lot of people who still use it, like, as their, like, professional, like, it helps them. Alright. So I'm gonna clean that out. Alright. Alright, I need to, I need to clean the lines out so I can see the hand. Alright. So I can kind of see how in here, it kind of like, and then like we have, oh, I gotta clean that part out too. We have the handle of the blade kind of coming out here. And here, it kind of comes out here. Barden! <laughs> oh, Ray. It's, maybe it's not as an actual person. Maybe you just did such a good job. This is more or less. And so I like to, so I personally do like a carving out kind of like, I'll make these big ass lines and I'll just kind of erase them to make my line art. Cause I think this really helps me like play with weight a lot more too. So you more or less, now we see the hand. I made it kind of big. I realize that. We'll make that. We can make that smaller. But you get the idea, right? How the hand will kind of exist. Okay, there's an ad starting in a minute, just as a heads up. 
I think it'll only last for uh, an hour, or not an hour, Jesus. It'll last a minute and 30 seconds, so that's we'll take some time to, like, hey, do some hand stretches. R stretch your wrists. Those are important. Very important. Um, God, can you imagine an hour of just ads? Bro, that would be awful. But yeah, go up, do a stretch, get some water or drink, use the bathroom, because I know people fucking sometimes need to be reminded to use the bathroom. I'm like that, too. Don't worry. Get a little snack. And we'll pick back up. We'll do booba. We'll do booba after the ad break. How about that? <laughs> I love you, Sky. Though that's I would not blame. I would I would stop stream if the ads were an hour. So I can see this is where our chest connects to our shoulder. We have that little line right there. So, and that is connected to our pecs. Yeah. Yes, Booba will be coming up here shortly. Okay, let me do some actual erasing. <laughs> this is literally all we're seeing me be on stream. All right. All right, ad is starting, so take a stretch. For y'all who are still chilling and can hear me, I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate you. Chuck, you're gonna make me bush. Dang it. I really enjoy people like wanting to learn. It's inspiring. And I like being able to help people. Oh my god, Bella, your tweet! I love you guys. Thank you for letting me do what I what I can do. It's funny because when I hung out with, the first time I got to hang out with Firelime in person, he literally, he looked at me, he's like, we went to the aquarium with Whimsy and we were at this one, like, it was like in the center of the room and walking by, there was this fish tank um, and there was some fish in there. I think there was like a little jellyfish in there and I'm looking at it. And then a little kid comes up and he's like, oh, what's this? And I'm like, I started like, yeah, like this is this fish and like da da da. It was a really cute kid. He was like maybe five years old. And John just looked at me and he's like, why aren't you a teacher? And I'm like, well, about that. <laughs> I want to. It was, I really wanted to. But, um, it was just not financially secure. I mean, neither is like any, any job in the art world, but like teachers are just kind of like, as we all know, not well protected and not well funded. But yeah, welcome back, everyone. Yeah. It's just really hard to get into. And it's like, unless you have tenure, which is <laughs> really hard to get. All right. So yeah. So there's is like our quick little jester drawing that we're going to turn. Like, you can see it to your I might turn this into a finished drawing. We'll see. But Yeah. So I can see how his weight is shifted and you can see how his body can kind of like exist like and these like <laughs> well tenure is something you guild at a place so I could kind of like see where this one kind of comes at the top and it comes through 
Yeah. So yeah. Lines are important. Use your lines. But yeah, there we go. You kind of see how this guy exists. All right, let's do Booba. Let me close this. All right, I'll hide that layer. Booba! Booba! That's a bad boob. There we go. We love Booba. She's great. How do we draw Booba? Have you seen a screenshot? No, I haven't. Go ahead and send it. Um, that's not Booba. So. <gasps> Yuzu! That's lit. Dude. Dude, look at that shine. Very nice. Anyway. So. A lot of people think, like, when they when I see them draw, they literally just draw, like, these half circles. Or, like, a whole ass, just straight up circle. Which is, like, it can be, but generally you don't get this without a silicone base. Boobs in themselves have weight, as we talked about. They're, like, they're, that's much more easier to compare. Yeah, because they're, so our boobs, like, breasts is, con is part of our pectoral muscles. So they're connected to our, the arms and shoulder area. So, the best example of drawing, when you're thinking of drawing a boob or a breast or whatever, you think of a water balloon. Because that's got the same kind of, it's got, you can, so in a water balloon, you can see the weight of gravity kind of come down. You can imagine in 3D, right? This is a poorly rendered water balloon. So, when I'm drawing... Let's draw. I'm just going to make a quick chest here, here, here. So when I'm drawing, so like this is my center of chest, right? And we got like maybe like our collarbones up here. Yeah. And our neck. Yeah. So I constantly like it. Yeah. So water balloons are going to be your best comparison. Just for the sheer like how you, because that's also like how the breast just exists. It's a sack of glands and fat. And so, like, let me draw the shoulder. So, so when I talk about, like, when we're connected to that joint, that's what generally what this line is for. We have this little patch of skin that allows our chest, our pectoral, and our, like, shoulders to, like, move around. So this, like... You'll see these, like, I have them a lot. So, like, sometimes they, they're, like, different in people. Some people don't have as pronounced, like, that little line of skin. I do. But, um, you got food. Let's go. All right. So, when we draw a brood, so, like, I kind of use, like, the center of my collarbones, almost, of each one to be, like, my line of center for the, the pecs, essentially. So, like, I have these guys. So, I can see where my breasts kind of like hang. So they kind of come down like that. And the distance between these two is different for everyone. I'm telling you right, everyone has a different spatial between their breast tissue. Oh yeah, we're on booba. Like, you have people who are pretty close, mine are pretty close, there are people who have like, they're a little further apart. It's, that's just bodies do be, do be bodying. So it depends on what you want to draw. So like, let me come back around. So as I'm like, and also another good general like thumb, boobs are not always twins. They can be sisters, sometimes cousins, just like our eyebrows. Generally they're the same shape, but like, di like different things can cause them to be different size, like little things. So that's all normal. <laughs> yeah. So how I kind of like, I kind of start with also like a little bit of an egg shape. Because they tend to be a little more larger at the bottom than they are at the top. So all the weight of your, it's going to be down at the bottom. This is where the heaviest point is going to be. Because it's pulling from your ch your pecs. Yes, because of gravity. Exactly. So I'm going to get rid of these. So I'm going to start... So I, I still need this line, right? 
So I mean, this is still my center line. So we, this is where we see the 3D. And this is where, if you're doing like spicy art, if you want to do nipples, they're going to be... So nipples will also change with age, with body type, like whole plethora of types, right? Yes, please. I will be posting this on tube. So like I could be down here. You could put it up here. I'm probably going to like kind of angle it that way. So this is where if I did nips, this is where they go. Have a good time at gym. So this is where I kind of like, okay, I can kind of clean this up for the most part. And remember, so the, your tissue, the, the, it does connect. So I can kind of see like, oh yeah, it would connect over here. Um, I think a little bit, yeah. Cause so like you have your line, it's just kind of like remembering it's a 3D object. They can be down here. It really just depends on like your per like as you're drawing it. That one's much more of a that's up to you because there's so much variety. There truly is just so much variety there. But generally, they will be like at the center point between um the the axes y and x. Y and X axis. Yeah. And generally, actually, they're going to be a little further down than what you might think. Because remember, they're for feeding children. So when we're holding our children, we're holding them kind of below. Right? So that's where that's we're going to be their most, most likely angled. But obviously, things change. But now I can kind of see, okay, now I can see my, my cleavage would be... Cleavage, um, if you want to, like, cleavage, this will change. Hi, JP, thank you for the head pads. Depending on, like, your bra, because there are bras that push them closer together. There are ones that are more relaxed. If you have a push-up bra, you're going to see a lot more, like, them pronounced cleavage. Hi. Raw meat. That's how parent rearing goes. But yeah, and then, so I can kind of, like... See that, so I don't need these lines. Clean that up. All right. So if I were to draw like, and then what if I'm like drawing a bra? There's that little clasp at the bottom. Back down here. Draw the band. And then sometimes bras don't cover the entire side, so that will come out. And I'm remembering this is a 3D object, right? So if I just do it like that, that I could, but it doesn't really like show. It also depends on like the line. So. I'm gonna also tell you, it's usually like, like I've learned to just draw instead of drawing like the classic Y. Sometimes it's a lot better just to draw one line, and then you you show the cleavage by using your shading afterwards. But yeah, and then if you want to do like side view, so here's our chest, right? Up. Uh, there's my midpoint. I'm drawing like, again, a balloon. So a lot of it is going to be the way it's going to be down here. It's not going to be like that or like that unless you have like a very serious push-up bra. Your bob's not going to do that. And your boob, the, the breast kind of like comes up a little bit. It, it kind of covers part of the... Um, it's like rib cage underneath. It overlaps it. So you'll kind of see this come over because and that's where the meme comes of like what can you hold on your boobs? Like how much can you fit under there? 
And there's the ribs. Belly. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a much more like swoop, this kind of like gentle swoop. Yeah, bro, bro, th people can fit a lot of things. Generally, it's generally, yeah, the bigger, the bigger ones will be able to hold more because they have much more overlapping space. Whereas if you draw like a smaller boob, a little, little petite, it's not going to hang as over, right? Because as it gets bigger, gravity's going to pull it down. And that's what causes it to come down. That's the droopy part. And generally, um, breast, the shape is actually, so natural breasts are pretty like, th like, kind of like thin or like more droopy just because of pure gravity. The only reason like modern day breasts have like this nice, like, I don't want like roundness is because of bras. <laughs> so these are important. like just kind of keep in mind best thing to if you're when you're drawing them think of water balloons because also let's do like a woman kind of like maybe or like a person maybe bending over a little right so maybe the dress is coming out but it's kind of going back in right they're like bending over your breasts are gonna hang low. They're gonna. It's gonna follow gravity. It's not gonna like stay close to your chest unless you're wearing something that is like tight, like a sports bra. They're gonna naturally just follow gravity down. And the same thing is like, and they're like, like if you're a guy and you really want to understand how this works, get water balloons and tape them to your chest. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Especially if you want to lay down. Like when they lay down, your body. Hold on. Or their boobs are going to go like that because that it's following gravity. They're not just going to stick straight up. Boobs don't do that. Chunk's going to be the best ally. So like, so if you're doing more, yeah, perspective work, think of where the top is going to be. And how it's going to, like, how gravity is going to affect it. Ain't no muscle dust. <laughs> Cause she thinks she's looking down at you. I just I just thought of like the pathetic meme. This is where we get to more perspective drawing. But yeah. <laughs> And like, if so, another, I've seen examples of like, so we have like a table, right? Let me draw. If you put a, like, if you put like a water balloon down, it's gonna like, remember, it's just, it's gonna fold in a little bit because all the weights down here, you got your water, it's gonna be connecting back to the body. Like that. So if you have like if you're re like if you're resting the breast on anything, remember water balloon physics, three D. Boobs aren't just gonna be this perfectly round thing when they're sitting on something, unless they're, they're <laughs> you 
Yeah, the fold. The, like, yeah, but like, that's what. <laughs> we all have the fold. Our body needs to be able to put those folds in in order to move around. So that's like, even when you're sitting down, your stomach's gonna fold no matter how skinny you are. You're gonna have stomach rolls no matter how skinny you are, because that's what allows your abs, like your muscles, to flex. Otherwise, like, they would be stretched and ripped. <laughs> <laughs> so let me do I have a work in progress that I can work with you guys or we're gonna do a new one too Is there anything else you guys want me to go over while we're here? While I'm looking around for maybe examples. Let me see if I have any old art I can show. Ooh, not that. Jacked men. All right. That's what, that's where you have to study, study muscles. <laughs> so let's let me find an example let me go to pinterest and find like fucking uh bodybuilder um male model Well, I'm going to leave right now. Muscles are wild. There's a lot of muscles we have that uh, you can't see normally, but bodybuilders will make them pop. Um, I can use him as a base example, then we'll move on. Oh, this guy's good too. I'm going to use this guy. Oh yeah, abs? Abs can absolutely be different for every person. Truly, they're like, ab not abs are not always symmetrical. I've seen like plenty of people have them where they're like, abs are also like very individualized. Yeah, so let me, so we're gonna use this guy, right? So you can kind of, it's like very lightly toned. All right, so let me put him over here. So let me, since we're focusing more on the top part. So actually, let me go over. I'm going to thin this guy, like not thin him out, but make it so he, let me go over here. So you can see the pectoral muscles here, right? Where they kind of come up. And you can see, like I said here, the nipple is a lot lower. That's kind of like where it is. But when we have, um, like with female breasts, you're going to have mammary glands that like make it, um that kind of buff up the bottom a bit. Yes, they don't like the sun. So you got your pectoral muscles here. Right? And from that center line, when I talked about, like, when I draw my center line, that's going to be your kind of, like, your big thing, especially for, like, abs. Because the abs, the abdominal wall, are going to, like, follow those, follow that, those lines like I did from the clavicle, come down here. <laughs> you have your belly button and from the belly button I kind of just do round you can kind of see like just more rounded parts right and you kind of see in here and we have these weird ass muscles on the sides that I will never understand That's because it's like our ribs. It's the muscles over our ribs. So you can kind of see how he comes down. 
and now like from here the hips yeah the obliques these things god they're weird to me these are really weird to me and in the shoulder so we have the connecting part right let me so his so his shoulders in front of the pectoral so that the shoulder is gonna be more um uh, observant here whereas over here you see that the the line connecting to the shoulder for shoulders you have your deltoid so if your guy is like if you're super jacked you kind of have this this center like fold in shoulders and your shoulder kind of comes in so you kind of see more defined you see the muscles kind of come out and then we have our biceps and our triceps a lot of people like to do this middle line to show the difference between the two um And depending on like, it's much more this way. Cause it's kind of like bop, bop. <laughs> and then usually our forearm, like sometimes you see like arms jacked and they're like, you see like this muscles bumped up, but not always. It's just a hand. Over here, and like you see like how tight, like, when it connects to our trapezoids and our clavicles, there's this like pinched almost. It's almost like boom. Where some like for more people it might be more slot like a more smooth connected line. Yeah, calling it rib meat makes you sound like a predator. <laughs> Sky, I think you're getting a little too into the cannibalism topic. I'm a little worried. <laughs> like an apex predator. <laughs> um, so you can see in here we have our abs. I like to people have made really good like references of like you're drawing like bread bread rolls. Like just a little bread roll will go here. Little bread rolls. <laughs> and men are also like drawing men. It's kind of like they're much more um, angular, whereas w typically women have much more rounder, softer, smoother curves, where men will have much more hard, angular lines. That's typically how a lot of people start character design and do like different between men and women. That's kind of like, again, start the rules, you go with your basics and then you break them later. Yes, Hawaiian Slayer is perfect. That's a, yes, those, those Dustin. That's exactly, yes, those. But you can kind of see like how without, like now that I've, we can clean it up. You see like, where's your shoulder? No, your shoulder's like way up there, dude. I'm sorry if I disrespected you like that. So come over here. Ah. Is this assault? <laughs> so yeah, that's the thing. It's like I like drawing because I really like drawing like rounded the curve. It just it's fun to play with. Men, I've I've learned later just because like. Yeah, you got like more angular, whereas women are like more rounded, like softer features like that, where it's like more sh sh standard, like not standard, but like straight. <laughs> and then his hands come out like that. Bop, bop, bop. Oh, this guy needs, he's got to bump up his leggies. Um, with thighs, I will go over just over here. So like. I've seen thighs where, like, you have this, like, the center line in here because this is where, like, the side of your thigh comes out pretty far. Yes, the recurve versus rigid is a good way. <laughs> and I've seen, like, yeah, like, that kind of bulges out. You have your calf, which can, like, super come out, right? Like, calves can be jacked. I feel like this guy's pretty calm with his abs compared to, like, others I've seen. 
But yeah. You can just lighten those up. Up, 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 up. Or you can like really thin it out. Center line. So this is where the legs join. And this is where like your hips bone, your hip bones, like that top is, that's where your hip is. That's where your ilia, il your ilia is. And that's also like, you kind of use that, the round curve versus rigid and also the facial features too. Again, play with them, have fun. But a lot of men are like, have more like, Angular jaws, cheekbones, brows are going to be a lot more angular. Um, and that's how you kind of like play with feminine versus masculine, like I like drawing ideas. Mm hmm. <laughs> There's an ad starting. Take a break. Stand up and stretch. And then we'll take a break for them too. <laughs> Let me reset while we're here. But yeah. I am a complicated man. Where's this guy at? Curve. Straight. Straight. Okay. I'll wait for people to get back here before I talk about knees! Knees! Because I think that's also a thing people might struggle with, too. Joints in general um, can be a little, like, confusing. Just because they're the, they're the parts that bend. Yes. I'm the bee's knees! Okay. I think Chunk is trying to get some extra credit points over here. Hmm. Am I wrong? <laughs> Shut up. Okay. Here my like so I'll get to the it's cause I haven't fixed the knees yet, Dustin. We'll get there. Damn it, Chunk, thank you. Thank you, Chunk. <laughs> As are ending, are going to be cleaned up here in a second. Welcome back, everyone. As we were discussing, I'm going to talk about knees. Because joints in general are kind of weird because they they the part that bend. So there's like a little more like flexibility. Like you get a lot more folding action. They're a little more complicated. So let's talk about our knees. So knees kind of come out because you have the patella, which is your kneecap, right? I need a, there we go. I'm just going to, so your patella comes out and that's our big knee. There's our knee, right? And over here, we're going to do the same thing, but it's going to be a little more side angled. Because your knee, so here's your thigh, here's your calf, right? In your knee, you have this floating disc called the patella. It is floating. A lot of people who fuck up their knees, it's like me, where it's because it got, so draw, it's like when you draw a knee, you kind of draw these two lines to show where that kneecap is. Yeah? When you fix the. And then you kind of curve out after. Hi, Drowsy! 
<laughs> so yeah. I hope you're doing well, too. All right, so yeah. Faha. So that's where kind of neat. So it's because there's a floating disc for your kneecap that comes comes out. And the, when you see these lines, it kind of just shows you where the knee is resting on your leg. <laughs> hey, man, Chunk wanted him jacked. Right? Yes! Tardew Mods! Yeah, so let me come back in here. Let me... Knee... Kind of comes in. Yeah, so I... <laughs> yeah, so yeah, let me, if you want, I can find, let me find a bot, let me find a body builder for you. Body builder. And then we'll really go over, okay, perfect. This man, thank you for com becoming my example. We're gonna, we're gonna appreciate this man, okay? Here we go, body builder. Here's where you get to see those muscles, your trapezoids, your biceps, your deltoids. Wait, triceps? Trapezoids, your traps, pecs, you get to see, yeah, your obliques over here, and you see even here, even his, he, like, I only see one really ab muscles, but the rest is kind of, like, toned down, right? Everyone's abs are different. And the thigh, you see where, like, we have, like, man, thighs are weird. You see that, that line, the same line over here, that's over here coming in. You see kind of like this, like thighs can be crazy ass to find. I tend to draw very soft, smooth thighs. Cause that's what I'm used to. A lot of times when I'm drawing, like starting with a body, I kind of reference my own body. Cause it's like, Hey, I have my own model. I just look down. Um, you get to see, like, yeah, your calves kind of jut out here, right? Right? You get to, and use with the shadows, you can see how they're defined. <laughs> and you see all these, like, little definitions of the muscles underneath. You see your abdominal wall down here. But yeah, these muscles are crazy because you can kind of see how, like, they're all connected. How the arm comes from underneath your shoulders and pecs. You see that line between your bicep and your tricep. This will recreate your pit. This is your pity pit pits 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 pits. But yeah. the The forearm doesn't get too much muscle because we don't really we don't really carry our muscle there, right? We mostly have muscle here just to move move our hand actually but yeah so like this part will maybe be like a little buffed up but generally speaking your forearms are pretty okay no i was just like most people like get weirded out when i draw like this line like i've done in art they're like oh, armpit i'm like we all have armpits i'm sorry to tell you that that's what lets us move our arms Ooh. so yeah and even in our neck, ooh, wrong color. So you'll see our neck kind of come down. Our traps, our trapezoids are behind our neck. That's a big thing to remember. They, they mostly exist behind our neck. I'll find a back version too, so we can look at back muscles. <laughs> and you can see how the shoulder, like the shoulder comes in front. Here's our clavicle. Our clavicles kind of, they're not straight, they turn, they curve. Um, and our necks are all connected. 
got another trap. So your traps exist. This is a good way to also show usually like a strong boy. You draw your the traps, man. That's what the Dragon Ball Z, dude. Dragon Ball Z is a really good example of how you draw like emphasize the traps that show muscle. Yeah, d dude. <laughs> Built packs are fucking crazy. You can kind of see how, yeah, that the continued line into the pectoral muscles kind of jut out, right? From this, this center line. And our center line goes down this way. And you can kind of see where, like, his ribs are. The obliques. Yeah, so, like, this comes out like that. There's, like, these muscles that come out here. You can see, like, maybe where his stuff, like, section off. And you can see, like, where his hips are, the beginning of his pilia bone. His pelvic bone comes down here. Right? You can see that. He's got, a, he's got like, a lot thinner hips. So this is, like, this man is broad shoulder, thin, thin hip ratio, right? Because his hips only come up to, like, here when his shoulders go out to here. This is the Dorito shape. This is where if you were to like, I've been drawing on this image. This is triangle. If you wanted to just put a base shape down, you draw a tri an upside down triangle. Cause that's stuff over here where like, I draw a person. What if I draw that? Their hips are gonna be a lot bigger, right? But if I do it Dorito, I can see his hips come way down here. Alright. A lot of superheroes are Dorito shaped. Because in our mind bigger shoulders mean stronger. Which isn't necessarily true. Like this man he, look, he looks very strong, right? But when you compare a bodybuilder to a, like a power lifter power lifters have like these guys train their muscles to flex. That is a big, they're, they're for showing the muscles. It's not built to endure, like, yeah, or more round, because their muscles are built, like, they're hardy, right? These muscles are actually pretty lean and don't can't support as much weight as, it, like, a, build, a, a power lifter can. The difference is insane. So, yeah, body, so bodybuilding is essentially... It's an aesthetic, honestly. It's to show the human form on all the muscles in the human form. Yes, we need fat. Humans need fat in our body. It protects our muscles. It protects our body. Like, oh, like. So let me pull the difference between. Let me get a power lifter buddy in here. Actually, let me, well, let me get his backside first. Then we'll go into the, the difference of a power lifter. Body builder back. Jesus Christ. All right. How, how fucked up bodybuilder do we want? Cause there are some big ones. I don't, one of them is creeping me out. I don't like it. Hi, Miku. Yeah. Uh, God, I don't, God, I hate looking at backs like this. I'm not going to do the most fucked up because it actually is, like, unnerving to me. We'll do this guy. He seems chill. He's doing CrossFit. All right. Back muscles are fucking weird. And that's because all of our, most of our movement is connected to our back. So that it's very important for our muscles back here to be, like, all over the place. I'm telling you, Bella, this is not the worst one of the ones I, I could have picked. I'm telling you right now, this one is chill. But again, you can see where I talked about that the the center line from from the shoulders cuz our shoulders has like two parts. We have like the rib muscles, we have this is these are our traps. These are the traps. This is what they look like from the back. You can kind of see the muscles over here how the comes out, right? These are, these are the triceps from the back, your biceps from here. And like I said, most, like, you're not going to get a whole lot of muscle in your forearm, right? Because most of our, most of our power comes from our core. Whether it be 
your are your biceps, abs, or thighs. That's where the majority of your power is going to come from. And you have like those obliques that lets you turn side to side. It lets you bend. Like these are all like parts like lets your shoulders move. You got your shoulder blades kind of in here. This is like the shoulder blade and the muscle on top of it almost. Um, yeah. It's really weird. Let me find if I can I find an anatomical. Let me show. Let me since we're talking about muscles. Um, anatomy muscles back. All right. I guess trigger warning if you're not used to like just muscle images, but this is like where you can kind of see how these groups exist and they let us bend. You can see the muscles up here, how each one is different. You can see how even within the muscle, you can see how they're divided to allow rotation. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, if you want a good example, you can see how there's a couple different muscles in our neck to allow movement. Yes. <laughs> Bella, let me pull them up here. What is it? Michael Phelps back. God, my Google search is going to be weird. All right. Um, why does he have bruises? His is pretty toned. I'm going to say, like, his is a lot more toned down. Yeah. So, but that's, the, that's the, t like, the thing. Swimmers are going to be a lot leaner. Because they're exercising f for different... The way <laughs> you exercise and what you kind of do changes... Your muscles will change how what you're doing. Because the way, like, a football player versus a swimmer... Their muscles are going to be look very different because they're trained for different things. Yeah, the cup, the cupping is a. Uh, I I was not aware. But yeah, well, I mean this has, this has a couple backs in it, so let me pull this one. So you can see here, right? A lot more subtle. You see, over here. The shoulder blades, right? And the muscles kind of within the shoulder blades. We have little, little smaller traps. This man is terrified. Yeah. But now you can even see the shoulder here. And like his tricep. Yeah. It's much more relaxed. You can see how the ver like relaxed versus flexed. Right? <laughs> right? This is the tricep more in the back. It's much more, you can still see like where his hips are cut, like his, where his pelvic starts, right? It's much more toned. And over here, you can still like, even this blurry guy who stuck his hat in his pants. Okay, dude, pop off. But yeah, so, and this is where you see it much more, like, he is holding on over here, where his muscles are activated versus relaxing. So let me, let's do a power, if I can know how to type power, not powerball, lifter. Uh, it's showing me bodybuilders. No, no, no. There we go. This guy will work for what I need. So this, when you see like a power lifter, he's going to be much more rounder because he's got the protective fat helping his muscles. His muscles, this man is going to be dense as fuck. His muscles are going to be heavy. Um, because he is ready to lift. <laughs> I'm glad you recognize them. I don't. Um, 
But you still see, like, you see the traps over here. You still have your shoulder. You even still see the shoulder definition and the, like, muscles here, right? They're just a lot more dense. There's a lot more weight to it. You still have your pecs. You still have, you can still see, like, the, the abdominal wall. That's still here. This man has it. I'm going to tell you right now, this man has, like, an eight-pack in here or a six-pack. It's just protected by that wall of fat that he needs. Otherwise, you're going to get a fucking hernia. You're going to rip that abdominal wall, and then your stomach or your intestines are going to slip out, and it's all bad, and you'll need surgery. Like... <laughs> Yeah. Also, yeah, water, the way our hydration plays a huge role. So, another fun fact, when you see guys with, like, really veiny arms, they're fucking dehydrated. You see your arm, your skin recedes when you're dehydrated, and it shows those veins. Um, so the more hydrated you are, the more, you're not likely going to see your veins pop out. It's a joke. But no, that's but like he brought up a good point of like how hydration also affects how our body looks. So we still got we still have like the hips coming down here. A normal person from a normal person. So if I were to like, you see, you can see that even like in here, his elbows are or not his elbows, but his forearms are more dense. Bro, this is attractive as fuck. This is a good body. Um, you can see where the muscles kind of can like change over here. Don't get tribal tattoos. Just don't. <laughs> that's a that's a PSA. But yeah, so you can kind of see how. Lean versus body belt versus power. Uh, so this is bodybuilding, power lifting, and probably more of a like swimmer esque body. The human body is wild. There is so much you can do with it. There's it can. There's so many forms, dude. I like bro. I like both. Like it. I like lean guys. I like thick guys. I don't know what you want from me. I <laughs> um, and then with women, let me um, can we go back? There was there was a model that looked. I think it was in here. Scroll down. Let me scroll down. Where was she? Can I? You're skinny. I want, like, just, like... Yes, this person. This is perfect. Because it's a whole bunch of 3D. <laughs> welcome, on, welcome to class! Hi, guys! Thank you so much for the shout-out! Hello! How are you? Oh my gosh. Hi, guys. Welcome on in. My name is Chai, and I have been doing an art lesson today of drawing people. How are you guys? I hope you're having a great Saturday. We were just discussing um, hum like the human body and the muscles and how fucking weird they are and how diverse they can be. I'd be very drunk. Ah! I hope you're having a good time. I hope the vibes are good. Ace, don't be weird to the new people. Oh my god. Hi, guys! Um, so I hope you're chilling. We're just doing art tutorials. I'm showing different bodies. Like, I was literally just about to show, like, the difference in, like... Ooh. Like, the heat, like... This has been a very entertaining... Good! <laughs> Good! I missed what you were doing. What were you streaming? I totally missed that. Scream doing drunk things. Me getting grim. Oh, grim passed out. That's fair. Okay, Chunk, I can, like, maybe ask for, like, a little. Maybe? We played, like, eight different games. Bro, that sounds so fun. She doesn't even know this. Oh, my God. Hi. 
Welcome on in. Thank you for the welcome to the coven, Scud Mister. Welcome on in. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, North B, for joining the coven. Oh my god. Hi guys. <laughs> Well, I hope you guys can sit back and relax if you like to learn a little about drawing people. I'm here. I'll also be posting this VOD um, on YouTube here in a little bit when I'm done. <laughs> oh. And I was just talking about how, like, so we were just talking about, like, thank you for my socials. Yes, if you'd like to follow me anywhere. Um, hi, Surf! Thank you so much for joining the coven! Um, this is, this is just for teaching. <laughs> um, there will be more, yes, I'll have more art classes streams. They take time to prep, so we'll, they take, they're a little more sporadic. I do like art, I do art streams, I do variety, I do Stardew, I play League. Um, there are more games than that, I swear. I'm just, that's what I've been playing lately. And yeah. And I'm also super ADHD, so I, I tend to either ramble or jump topics or whatever. I am so sorry. But yeah, no, so as I, like, I was talking here, so we're talking about the difference between, uh, like, men and women. So we were just talking about how, like, men can be, like, oh, yes, welcome, cast a fish. If you, yeah, we have a little fishing mini game. What are you catching this time? Okay, we're taking a fishing break. Hold on. You got a turtle! Ow! It's going! <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! I'm being bullied, hit, and people are fishing. What a day. Oh my god. Why are you bonking me? You get your... The trout? Ow! <laughs> I guess we're taking a break, class. Uh, recess. We're taking a small recess. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi, guys. <laughs> Ooh, you got something big. Joel? Joel the sturgeon? He has a name? Oh my gosh. Dang, you cashed in, bro. Yeah, go to sleep. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you so much again. Oh my god. Big Mama Pickle. I love that. Thank you so much again. Get some good rest. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can. Dude, there was so what? Ray got a vape? Ace and Whimsy got a scooter. Um, ooh, you got a barracuda. What do you mean? You don't like pickles? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is a pickle household. Oh, you did get a skateboard. You're so cool. You can get coffee. Uh, I, what, Dustin got a watch earlier? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in here. It's so cool. I wasn't aware you were a sinner. Hi, simple. Okay, gamer. We stand. We love pickles. I'm not an olive person, though. I like pickles, but I don't like olives. That's not a butterfly. Miki was like, I guess I'll deal with it. Are we good? Are we all caught up? Okay. <laughs> or on pizza. I just, I've never got into olives. I'll give them to Erica, though. She loves them. So, yeah, as we saw, like, guys can be, like, lean. They can be bodybuilding. Like, swimmer. Lean, like, got, bro. And then we, like, women can also be like this, too, where we have like, kind of, like, a normal softer like so like women tend to be like have more rounder like the hips are more rounder the chest is more round like kind of a rounder you have a more defined waist between 
the hips, right? But women can also just equally, let me find, let's do a bodybuilder woman. Actually, I have a friend who, a woman, yeah, a friend who's a bodybuilder. She's insane. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I hate that when they're all oiled up, it looks so weird. Shit, there's an ad starting here in little, okay, I'll wait. I'll, I'll look for example, but there's an ad coming up. So if you need to stand up and stretch, get a snack, do your thing, do it. You guys get a minute and a half, here, or you'll get two minutes. You'll get a two minute break. So let me find a good example. Well, yeah, they do the oiling up because, again, bodybuilding is about showing off the muscles. So you have, when you're oiled up, there's much more of a like, difference between light and shadow. You can see the higher contrast. So it's just showing them, here are your muscles. I'm sorry, Sky, what? I don't like when people oil themselves up like, oh, like, like a Thanksgiving dinner. I was like, what kind of Thanksgiving dinner do you go to where people oil themselves up? <laughs> Ooh. Perfect. Let me copy this over. Yeah, you can see, like, more, like, generally softer features are in women. Right? Let me make this more. Okay. And then. Back over here. Oh, right. I've got to wait. i got to wait for the people who don't, who have ads. Let me take some water. <laughs> I'm telling you, muscle. We have a lot of muscles. Midnight, welcome to the coven. Thank you so much for the follow. That's not, but no. Um, I don't know who this is. Did Google? Will Google tell me? No. I don't know who this is. But, okay, we're back. Welcome back. So here's, like, a, a female bodybuilder. Again, you see the crazy-ass, like, definitions in here, right? You still see their muscles. You got the kneecap. Again, we got our knees that are floating. The calves are defined. And you see the pectorals, how I talked about. There can be a small space between them. They still connect to your shoulders, right? You still have your abdominal wall. People can be all shapes and sizes, and that's what matters. She can like she has pretty defined traps. She's flexing like her hips out. Or like she's like putting it back so the legs are a lot more def like attention, and it, like even the like you can see, there is a little bit of muscle in the forearm, but it's not this part again. It's really hard to like get that specific muscle jacked up because there isn't a good way to like target that. It's one piece of anatomy. I mean, actually though, it's just a normal body. It's just a normal toned up body. So if I like. Yeah, that looks pretty. With our little feet. Oh, do you want I me? Mean, we can go over One Piece Anatomy and why it, it. Every time we watch it, I'm like, God damn it. God damn it, it's One Piece. Yes. Not Mr. Miss Monday! Yes! We love her! Okay, so... Look at her! You see, again, with the, you still have your defined waist, but you have your muscles. They're jacked up. 
this one is generally usually exaggerated again because it's almost really hard to always get that muscle in. Compared to like other One Piece. Let me pull up Nami and you'll see what I mean. I. Where like where is it? I need a, like a really good example. Dude, Nami's entire anatomy is in there. Um, I'm getting a lot of fan art, which is like proportional, and I'm like, no, 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 I want the source material. How do I get a screenshot? I want a screenshot of Nami. Oh, that's AI. Fuck. Hold on. I gotta do minus AI. There we go. Ugh. By the way, we hate AI art. It's not even art. AI imagery in this house. Here we go. Copy image. Nami's anatomy do make me sad, because this waist would snap. We're, we're, we're it's her neck is almost the same like as her just barely smaller than her neck her waist is like that's not good if you need to take a nap I'll me take a nap yeah so like you can still like again we know the rules we see the rules in practice that we talked about earlier right but this is where we talk about shaping can create characterization one Piece is really famous for its female anatomy because of its shaping. Like, people recognize it. That's for sure. But you can see how Oda still follows the rules that we talked about. But, like, he can he bends them enough to create his own style. Yeah. I have to specifically exclude AI because of how fucking prevalent it is. No, that, that's what I mean. Oda is, and that's exactly what Oda is doing. He is following, like, he knows the rules. He, like, we see them in practice here, right? Like, we still see how it connects. Yeah? But he bends them enough to start his own style. You can see where, like, the shaping comes in. We recognize, like, if you do a silhouette of Nami, you would, you can still be like, I know that character. That's why silhouettes are really important character design. You're so identifiable. So let me, versus, like, let's do Nami versus, what's another character from a different show? I don't know. Well, the problem is, I think, honestly, a lot of the, bro, my, my issue is a lot of the women have the same body shape in One Piece. Because, like, we have this tiny, and then we have the same body shape, but the hair and face are different. Right? And then let me grab... Actually, yeah, let me do... Nabara. I can see. Minus AI. God damn it. Yeah, let's do Why are the images so small? Minus AI. That was really depressing. I just put an anime woman and it was all AI. That was hella depressing. Full body. Oh, wait, no, I'm dumb. Hold on. What's, um... Shit. 
What's her? Oh, One Piece. Grandma. Yeah, yeah. Let me get her. We're gonna get grandma representation in here. Kokoro. Hold on. So even in One Piece, there's still diversity. This is this is the drastic difference. Oda can only draw two women into these two. But you still have like you can play with the shape where it's like she's got the hour hourglass. This is grandma. This is Kokoro grandma. She's a mermaid. Respect her. Um. And I mean, like, and then, like, I talk about, I think I, I talked about this, um, hold on, you said Ozen? The problem is, God, I can only find fan art, so I can't tell what's, like, a good representation. Um. I mean, but I do want to show another, um, where we, so I taught, so I watched, uh, Anastasia a few nights ago with some friends, right? And I talked about how Don Bluth can only take, can draw two men. Uh, they're well done, I will say. It's, it's not a critique or anything. It's just, he has two definable characters. Hi! So let me pull up. Yeah, you can put, you can put, like, yeah. Oh. Food poisoning? No! I'm so sorry, Usa. Oh my god. Please rest. Please rest up. Holy shit. I've had food poisoning before. And let me put it up. Um. Blood. Where's this over here? Right? Anastasia. We have this nice... You can tell, like, the defines. He looks young. He's very angular. And then with, like, the older guy, we got more much rounded curves. He's... You, you actually feel much more safer with him because rounder equals safe in our brain. Where angular feels more threatening. Right, but this is how a good way to show if you put a silhouette over these over these two, you would still be able to like tell them apart. So that is my suggestion when if you're doing character design, after you're done, do a silhouette. Make like if they if you can determine who they are and they're not just man A, man B. It's a good way to test good character design. So let's cause let's like let me do silhouette. Um, characters. Google? Let's see if... Um... Honestly, here we go. Perfect. A couple, uh, actually... Let's do half of this is me trying to find good examples. Um, you so what you do is you literally put like the minus symbol AI. Minus symbol AI. So, yeah, we'll do this. I'll use this one. So, in here, this is the big silhouette. A lot of these forms are really recognizable because, like, I can identify, like, Kirby, Pac-Man, I got Spyro, we got Crash Bandicoot, we have the Fallout Boy, Samus, Donkey Kong, Bulbasaur, Yoshi, and Toad. Pyramid Head, Sonic, like, <laughs> bless me, uh, I'm sorry, even down here, even though he's cut off, I can tell that's Cloud, we have Link, like, we have Ezio over here from fucking uh, Assassin's Creed, 
<laughs> I don't think I'm able to get 100%. Like, I think that's Big Daddy, but I'm not entirely sure. Like, we have the Pac-Man ghost. Kratos, I assume. We have fucking, what's his name from Street Fighter? Yeah, I couldn't tell if this was Lara Croft or not. I didn't want, it was like weird. But yeah, like, the, like, silhouettes really tell us a lot about a character. Like, especially, like, I, you can tell so much. <laughs> oh. Like, especially, dude, especially, like, when Pokemon, when it's like, who's that Pokemon? That's a good example of the silhouette principle. Like, it's, it's, that's why it's fucking funny when they're like, it's Voltorb. Nope, it's a Jigglypuff from upside down. Or, like, from overhead. Like, it's so, <laughs> but yeah, overall, like, when you do the Pokemon game, Pokemon silhouettes, it shows you a good design. If it, you can identify it. Yeah, the problem is, like, I don't know, I don't recognize you. I don't recognize... Oh, he's another guy from Street Fighter. I don't remember his name, though. I know who he is, though. This is... I don't have enough information he's, like, to just go off of this. And this one, I'm like... I, don't, I can't even tell what it's supposed to be. I'm sure if, I, like, if you uncloaked it, it would make a lot more sense. But I might just not recognize it. Like That could be just that. Obviously, Pikachu. Like, that tail is iconic. If you get rid of that tail, hold on. Like, for example. Alright. Now it's a bunny. That's just a bunny. But if you. That tail, that is Pikachu. So think of the features. Like, we know, like, like we know Sonic from his iconic hair and his feet. Yeah. Like, we love Pyramid's pyramid head. That's, like, we love Toad's big head. Like, they all have pretty identifiable features. Oh, is this from Street Fighter? Yeah, probably. I swear to God, Ace, I'm gonna snow. I can tell, say, like, I can tell by the shoulder pads, the arm. Donkey Kong got his iconic little head shape. We know, like, we know Link by his shield, his hat. I can tell that's, is it Ryu? Because of his headband and the, the, the scruffy clothes. Right? Oh yeah, I don't, this guy feels very generic to me though. I don't know if that's supposed to be Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. I don't know. This, this one is, again, not a whole lot of identifiable features that, like, make him stand out compared to, like, any of the others. Like, him versus this guy? Yeah, like I said, I don't know if it's Sub-Zero or if it's Scorpion. It's, it's, there's not really, um, too much of a, like, yeah, I can see his toes. That's, like, about the most unique thing I can see. This guy, I can see his hat. He's a lot more defined. Even, Ryu, like, Ryu over here just has that, and I'm like, oh, yeah, clock him. That's Ryu from Street Fighter. Like, these are little things. They're just little things that make, that, like, stand out. Wah, wah, wah. All right. Hold on. Yo! And I'm looking at Rolls' art. Dude, I love your hair. I love the hair! And also, in, so this is kind of like tying in. So in my Discord, I've added the art resources uh, channel. That's where I'll post, like, a lot of, like, these tutorials, anything that, like, these new tips and tricks, resources to, like, brushes and scenery. So 
So yeah, and like, I, if you want, we can go over some of my own art. Hold on, I have, I have to close like all of these. Can I like, nope, okay, we're just gonna. Don't save. Don't save. Don't save. Don't save. Don't save! Don't save. Oh, I've put too, I've put way too much in here. Alright, oh my god. Alright, whatever. We're gonna, I'll just go off of that. Alright. So if I, let's pull up my own art. All right, so you guys saw me, like, if you were here for a few streams ago for Fan Art Friday, when I did the Jinko, you can see how I used that reference to build up a hand to make it, like, understand where that finger is coming from over in the leg position to understand where, how our, this leg would come out, right? <laughs> And you can see, like, the more stylization stuff come in. Like, where I have, like, the eyes you can play with different... Hi, Joe! The eyes you can play around with the shape. Um, maybe I have some stuff from... Like, when I did Poison Ivy, I worked more on, like, the softer tones, right? I did a softer thigh, softer shoulders overall. Where, like... Let's see here... I draw so fun. I like drawing women. They're giving me my like my main thing. Whereas him, I got to do like a much more like focused on the bot. Like they're still round because I'm like clothes. Clothes will kind of like cover that stuff, right? But like I still focus on my muscles, the way the arm is gonna bend, right? How the how our body is gonna be built with those features coming in, right? Like over here. How overall, yeah. Let's see. Hi, crazy. Oh, let me see. Ugh, I might. Let's pull out some old art for you. I I'll embarrass myself for you guys. Um, let's do this one. So I made this in two thousand twelve, right? I still, like, obviously I was struggling a lot, but, like, I was trying my best. Like, I needed, like, I didn't work on my feet. Like, the connection over here is not defined. Like, there's no separation between the leg and the hip. So this is just a weird, like, I'll critique my own art. Like, yeah, that's not right. I made the hair, like, kind of blend into the cheek. So it's kind of helps to have your, like, features kind of stand out. I would have, like done that more with the thigh to make, make it recognizable right and then that should have been come out a little more overall I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm still pretty happy with how this came out back then but like because I was under because I was just learning that stuff I was learning all of it which then turned you know I can go from this to um To that. Like. From here. To here. Oh. Xantharos, welcome to the coven. I hope you're having a great night. <laughs> We're not night. It's not night yet. It's afternoon. I'm having a great afternoon. Yeah. Like, I made this for Whimsy. Which you can buy as a t-shirt. That's a little plug. Um. I'll even show some old art to show the like where I came from. All right, I'll show the really embarrassing one that I hate showing. So this is where this was like back in middle school for me ish, All right? I had a vague idea of what things looked like, but like obviously, like my <laughs> my cheek, my eye. My, I had no traps, no shoulders, essentially. No leg, no feet. Right? But even this, if, even if you feel like you're here, you can get, if, if you practice, and look at when, like, look, try to draw something you see every day. 
or like just as much as you can and do like over and over and you'll like you'll get more used to it and you'll see the improvement if i can go to this to this you can too drawing is just about patience practice and passion and you find joy in it that's what keeps you coming back if you find find it enjoyable you'll you'll keep growing i promise yeah and even this i can critique some of it like the ear i know the ear comes like this but because the hair it looks like the ear is kind of floating almost i should have probably done a little connection there but we'll always grow we'll always improve yeah So let me, and even I can show you like how my style has changed where I did, I mean, I'll show you a weird drawing I was commissioned to do. It got like, I got like this where it was like much more rounded features, a little more cartoony, like American cartoony-ish. Um, this was a commission I had back in 2015. <laughs> they turned it into a poster too. So yeah, this is my friend Sam. This is Sam. He wanted an image of him feeding an egg to Sonic. Yeah. Oh, you got a crumpled up soda can. <laughs> but yeah, like and style can change. You can play around with it. This was an old, like, back then. Like, this is what a, an old character of mine was. And I was like, if I... So I measure, like, from her legs to her head. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm pretty... That's something I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm pretty good at eyeballing how long legs are compared to the rest of the body. I feel pretty confident in that. Where I, I just got... I've gotten used to being able to see it. All right. Let's go. Let's go to. And you can even see some of this, like, you can, like, transport this into, like, chibi style. Because chibi just means small. So you just take what you do. Hold on. Let me find. Can I find? Where's a good chibi I've worked on? Uh, hi demo you've missed a lot <laughs> don't worry i'll send you the vod okay so this is a drawing i used using a reference like directly from a photo i didn't like trace over but it was kind of like me guessing so i could see how like the folds were her hand like this helped a lot if i just didn't use a reference, this would have been way wonkier. So I can see the 3D aspect of how her hands would go over her hip, right? <laughs> Let's see. And if you want, like, super cartoony, like, this is an old one I made a long time ago. Like, you, as long as you still take, like, respect, like, understand where things exist, like, these are going further back in space, just remember, it all exists in 3D. Like, you can apply that even into a cartoonish style, right? Um, let's see. Um... Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh my god, the old Tumblr. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have a lot of cringe on that old Tumblr. Let's see. You can, okay, ooh, here's another one, an old one I did. I was, it was, like, my first commission. This was a long time ago, so obviously, like, my, my arms are fucking weird. Uh, there's not a test, but there is homework. 
You can tell, like, I, I really struggled, like, with these hands and how to, like, do a pose like that. So it's, these hands are kind of going down instead of that, instead of, like, doing that. His arm is weirdly going up. It's, like, weirdly not connected. But, like, I could almost, like... His arm's, like, swooping down. <laughs> I wouldn't be a teacher if I didn't give you homework. What kind of teacher would I be? There's an ad coming up here in a little bit, too. Um, so we'll do another break. And I think I've covered most of what I wanted to cover today. Oh, never mind. Ads are snoozed. Okay. You want to, oh, if you want to test, man. So here's the thing. With art classes, you get projects. So I can assign you a big-ass project if you would like. <laughs> You'll do it? Really? Oh, man. Well, thank you guys for being here and let me talk. <laughs> Right? Don't save. Goodbye, baldy. Bar bar power lifter body type. Ugh. Can't say the words at the same time. Swimmers. Muscles. Our backs are weird. Muscles for show. Alright. Oh, fuck. Okay. Ooh, I might. And I think I might need a little nap at this point. What is art? What is art? I'm going to tell you, that's a, I've had a whole philosophical class in college about what is art. We've kind of like... My philosophy is if you intend it to be art, it's art. Art can be a lot of things. You can have a specific meaning to art. You can leave it open. Like, as long as you want it to be art, it's art. Thank you for the stand-up and stretch. Mm. Oh, my. And I just popped my shoulder. Ah! Oh, my God. because <laughs> usually we use art as an expression of ourselves and it's like we use it to connect with other people we use it to show what our emotions are in a way that like we can't maybe verbalize we use art to show what's going on in the world we show art to connect to the world art is a pure for me is a pure form of human expression and that's why I hate AI, <laughs> like AI generative imagery, because it, it's cold. It's not express. Like there's no soul in it. <laughs> BRB already. Wop wop wop. Yeah, we yeah, so. Yes, ask away. Any questions, go ahead. Up. We start with my A. A little bit of a cheekbone. I'm considering moving the digital art. 
So there will be there will be the so transitioning from dish or like traditional art to digital art is a little bit jarring, um, simply because it's you're learning essentially a new tool. Um, but the fundamentals will still will still be there, right? Um, depending on like so I hi Apollo hi honey hi sweet baby boy hi. Did you want... Okay, Apollo said it's a cuddle time. Hi, buddy. Oh, are you cut? Okay, I'm going to take a break from drawing. Um, so, yeah. When I first um, started digital art, it was a little hard because, like, I... So there's tablets, which you kind of have to train yourself not to look down at your hand while you're drawing. You have to be, like, look at the screen and not look at your hand. But that like So that's if you have, like, a traditional drawing tablet, um, not, like, a monitor screen. Um, and there are different brushes that, like, show, like, let me show in here. Hi, honey. Hi. Okay. Yeah, Paul's cuddling up. All right. I will say, actually, like, I'm glad I started traditional first and then went over to digital. Um... Because, like, when I did oil painting, I had a, a oil painting taught me, like, a good bit about, like, how to blend colors, how to work with lights versus darks, and how to work with um, contrast. And so once I understood how that kind of worked in a physical way, I was, I can understand kind of how to move stuff around in a digital way. We'll go over color theory. Don't worry, I'll go over color theory with you because that's a whole other ball there. There's an ad starting, by the way. I'll take a break. This is a cuddle break for Apollo, so there we go. All right. Hi, honey. Hi, Apollo. Mm, he's purring. Mm. Yeah, did you need some love? Did you need some love? Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, buddy. One of them chin scritches. Oh. Hi, if you don't know, I have two cats. and They are my precious babies. Hi, I have an orange cat named Apollo. And I have a tuxedo kitten named Nico. Hi. <laughs> the bestest babies. Hi. Hi. Oh. You got eye gunk? Let me clean it. Hi, honey. He's, he sure is purring. Yeah. I got Apollo in 2020, so he was my COVID baby. He's a quarantine baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. Ah, should be ending here, wrapping up. All right, welcome back. All right, so as I was saying, being able to understand how like brushes and color and like paint would work in real life has helped me a lot in a digital sense, especially when I'm doing digital painting. Um. Like I said, the most, probably the biggest jarring thing is if you're doing the, the first switch, it's just learning how to draw while looking at the monitor and not at your hand. If you have a traditional drawing tablet. That was probably my biggest thing. Um, if you want, you if you have like an iPad around, you can download Procreate as like, and you can like draw as if you're drawing on paper. Um, and that's a good transition. Um, I would say the biggest hurdle you're probably gonna have to like, it's, I wouldn't say it's a hurdle, it might be overwhelming, is the world of brushes. There's a lot of brushes and a lot of settings and a lot of things you can do with them. You just have to find the right brush for you. Um, it took me a while to find a sketch brush that I really liked. Along with the, like, coloring, like, when I'm painting, doing shading, I have different brushes I use. That would be, I would say, the biggest, um, thing. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi, honey. Any other questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Apollo is just laying on my arm. He's curled up. Ah, and sitting on my drawing tablet. Hi. Oh. Are you, he's making- you're making yourself comfortable, sir. You planning to be here for a while? My big baby. <laughs> oh man this was definitely fun so yeah in the vibe so demo because you missed it earlier i covered the basics of oh like start with your basic shapes go on to gesture drawing i broke down our proportions between our head and our body and we went over different body types and different shapes and how that can lead to different like characters like styles if you want to do like more to style, like characters and oh my gosh, Paulo, I've got a brush you. You're shedding like crazy. Um, oh my allergies, fuck. <sighs> yeah, and then and then so I'll talk about the future. Um, I plan on a lesson. I'll do. I'll go over hair. How, like, physically our hair drapes over our skulls, different types of hair, because that affects the weight and style. And then also go over clothing, because that is a whole bag of tricks. Also go over different coloring methods, different shading and color theory. And if there's other tutorials that people would like, just shoot them in a suggestion in my Discord. And I'll be glad to plan a lesson for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, clothes is so, there's so much. There's so much variety. Hi. I'm sorry, y'all. My cat has decided the class is, uh, at best taking a pause, at worst ending. Well, what do you want, buddy? What do you want? My big orange baby. Mer, mer, mer. Can I... Can I get my arm back? Can I have my arm? Apollo, please. Please. Oh, he's just, he's just purring. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm going to be covered in fur by the time he gets up. Hi. I'm trying to teach a class here, sir. He doesn't care. He's a cat. Why would he care? Yeah. Oh. A good star. Hi. Oh, I think I hit the good spot. He's kicking. Yeah. Hi. Apollo. Boop. Yeah. <laughs> He's just, he's just my baby. I can't say no. He's my little baby. I should really make like a little Apollo and Nico like item asset for my model. Yes. Yeah. Oh, are you kicking again? Hi. My sweet baby boy. Hope you like me talking to my cat. I'm so sorry. 
Ah. Uh, hi. All right. All right, you've had a two and a half hour class. My college classes are about three hours, so I'll let you out early today, okay? But if you want to practice, I suggest do look up gesture drawing. I'll let me see if I can find a good link real quick that shows the good um, gesture drawing timer. Oh God, all the fur. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, so okay, this is a good site. I like this one. Stop session. Or maybe not. No. So I'll put this link in chat. I think this one is pretty good. It'll give you basically a picture of a person or like a position and you'll give you can select which how much time you want to like to do. It looks pretty creative. Um So this is seems like a pretty good site if you want to practice gesture drawing, just getting those quick shapes down, keep your hand loose. Keep it keep it fast. It has some weird certificate thing, but don't even bother with that. Don't worry about that. That is not necessary. All right. I think this was a good session. If I do say so myself, I might be a little biased. Who knows? Um, yes, go ahead. Ask the question. Meanwhile, I'm going to look for us to raid. Maybe we'll find some more art. Or some chill. Maybe some fun times. We'll see who's on. But ask away. Hmm. Hmm. There's a lot of good art streams going on today. I'm doing lines in metal, but yours is. <laughs> so this is where I yeah. So this is where I imagine the the head as a three D object, kind of rounded about. I don't do straight lines unless I'm doing a straightforward look. Because our faces are curved, right? We don't have flat face stuff. So I have to keep in mind. So this is, so you missed the part where I, so I look at heads like eggs. All heads are egg shaped, basically. And then I kind of like do my lines based off of that. I can see like the ear over here based on that. This is where the nose will come out. Dun, 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 dun.
tilt line followed by lips. Oh, so it. So here's the fun thing about art. You can do it any order, any way you want. There are no strict rules. It's what works best for you. And then that is the biggest thing. So you can always do like that and then like kind of go from there. Um, I just put, cause I want, I want to know where this head is going to exist in space. That's where I always like, I just draw a circle. Where, where is his head? Where is his, where is he specifically looking? If the chin is down here, I can kind of see he's tilted like that. Right. So I can see like the angle. Is this going to be this way? Right. So that's just how, that's how it works, what works best for me. I can kind of see his, the head kind of go back a bit. <laughs> yeah, so like it, it really just, whatever works best for you. Like I can see, you can see me kind of struggling with his neck. So I don't, I wouldn't necessarily totally know how, oh, there we go, actually. I don't know, man. I just work here. So that's why I mean, like, the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be able to do it. And you'll just get to be able to do like, okay, this is what it kind of generally looks like. It's training your eyes too. The, a lot of art and drawing is training your eyes to recognize and build the muscle memory connected to it. Cause like, if I do that, if I do. And so even though like, so say like I do like this, I can kind of like, what if I made this made, what if I made this the eye line, right? And this is like the back, so like, like that's the back of the head. So if I did it like this, I can see that this guy is looking up. I mean, so like his jaw would be more exposed. So the under part would be Perspective, I think, should also be its own huge ass lesson because damn, perspective is perspective is hard. So remember, and it's all about because like I can make his eyes like that. You can make eyes droopy. Like eye shape is also really like you can play a lot with eye shape for a character that like shows off his personality. Is like, what if like eyes are like if I do It also makes me think of like a mischievous character, the more pointed up you could do really stylized character, make a really sad, droopy one. Maybe this guy's like super tired. He's just got like heavy bags. I do these little lines to show me like, hey, the nose is three dimensional. Keep that in mind. And I can kind of see how the shading would go right there. Maybe he's got like a longer Face. 
Yeah. There's a whole lot of the world if you're going to, like, do stylized drawing and not just, like, height, like, realism. The world is your oyster. There are no strict rules. Just don't copy. But, like, I would just say there are some taboos. Yes, like, tracing and selling, like, stealing credit, all that same stuff. But this is, I want you, this is more about you focusing on improving your own skill, right? Learning how, like, Try sketching a circle. Just practice sketching circles. Because when I draw... Okay, that was actually pretty not bad. But, like, I've drawn circles. Like, there are... I draw circles a lot to get used to that shape. And I can kind of see how you can, like... Yeah, but, like, I like doing sketching. Because circles, um, the whole point of them is that there is no straight line in a circle. They're always curved. And I can kind of, like, a, like, shape it out almost. Yeah, so like I said, but that's not bad demo because again, you're learning the rules. So the biggest quote I had earlier, um, you have to know the rules in order to break the rules. And breaking the rules is when you add your own style, play with the guy, like proportions, you mess around and make your own thing. But it's like learning, you got to make sure you have your fundamentals. <laughs> I mean, it, dude, if you just get, like, a notebook or, like, just, like, on, like, receipts or something. And also, I mean, another thing that helps me a lot, too. So when you're doing, like, say you're doing your gesture drawings, I want you all to do a pen, one in pencil, right? Or, like, if you're doing a physical traditional art. If you're doing, phys like, traditional art, I want you to do one with, like, a couple in pencil I want you to do a couple in pen. You should, don't be afraid of putting marks down. Don't be afraid, like, j you, just go with it. Trust your instinct, tr trust what your hand is doing. And don't get hung up on it. Yeah, literally, it, like, bro, I, bro, I drew on my arms all the time when I was in high school. Literally all the time. I had a pen. I would just be drawing on my own self. I would draw little little designs on all over my hands and arms. Um, I drew on everything. <laughs> uh, get used to different shapes. Get used. Remember your boxes. Remember our boxes that help us think in three D. Right. Help us think in 3D. And then you can also, like, we'll do this more later, but you can actually use a box to help you, like, here's the top of the head. Here's the front of the head, right? Here's the side of the head. Help you, if you need to use the box to help you think in 3D, right? Because, like, we can, we can use that. But she was like, oh yeah, where, how, how would hair work? How does hair, hair, hair is wild. <laughs> we can always mostly break down our stuff into basic shapes and build off of it. There are building blocks. And my biggest thing is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to try that weird pose you've been wanting to do. Don't be afraid to put pen down, put marker down, put ink down. Whatever you need to do. <laughs> Don't worry. As soon as I wrap up here, I will, I'll work on downloading it and I'll upload the raw VOD up on my YouTube. And then I'll probably ask for some help on making an edited version to keep it condensed and, and like actually like educational. Because I know I've ran off on like tangents and shit. All right. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me. Let's see. If, let's, let's find a chill. God dang it. I want to, what is this? I don't want this. I'm not interested. I don't want this giant thing covering the, oh my God. All right. Let's look around. There's a lot of good artists. Holy shit. Bro, I love the art world. There's just so, I love the diversity. I love the different creativity that I've seen so many artists 
do things that I would have never thought of to trying. Like, oh shit. That's why I, I also recommend checking out different artists, look at their stuff, study, study art history. I'm going to tell you that right now. It helps me a lot when I think of certain things. Um. Oh, oh, is this one of my favorite? Oh, we have one of my favorite artists. I feel weird coming in here, but I love her work and I think she does it really well. So let me. And she's drawing Street Fighter girlies. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. of. I follow her on Twitter. So we're going to be rating Ox. Let me get that ready. It's gonna be weird. I'm I'm like fighting my anxiety because so I'm like, oh god, she's kind of like she's kind of big. Like, there's a lot of people in this stream, but like, I think it's a good place for you guys to see like one of my inspirations. So let me get this ready. All right, so we'll get that started. I'm kind of scared to use a raid message. Do you think you'll be okay? If I do, like, if you guys do a raid message? I don't know. I'm nervous. This is me nervous. Oh, shit. Thank you guys again. I'll be back at some point this week. I'll put a schedule in my Discord, and I'll post it on Twitter. I'll get that started. Thank you, Viper. Thank you guys again so much. You guys have a great day, and I'll see y'all later. Good night. Even though it's not night, it's afternoon. Goodbye.